Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. This is Ren Ru. Hello, hello, hello. Folks, we took a bit of a week off last time. You know, but everyone's hale and hearty now. We are back in Orsh East giving some more destruction with who, sir? Left hand side in the blue, we have Espresso playing as Russell Spring with Vanguard Income. Right hand side in red, we have Insa playing the Czech Brigade with a Maverick Income. Well, one of the things I kind of realized with the Czech Brigade, that's kind of a, more of a checkered group when you think about it. I mean, we have Kiwis in here, we have some Brits, uh, we see some Free French for some strange reason. You know, I, I guess not really expecting quite that um, well multicultural of a group. But I guess it makes sense because we're also sprung with all the kind of drips and drabs for them as well, though, too. <laughs> yeah, all very multicultural on all sides. But also be an interesting matchup. Russell Spring has fantastic infantry, not a whole lot of tanks. Bit vice versa, yeah, from Insha. And we've seen before just how deadly Cromwells can be. So against a force which just doesn't have tanks, they will be king of the battlefield. Yeah, that's kind of like the crazy thing about this. And I was actually watching just now as, a, as a, yeah, excuse me, SPW AB43 and a Pac-36. They could have been engaged by a couple of Daimlers, but the Vickers over here in the meantime, well, not going to do a whole lot to a Vickers with a Pac-36. Nope. Nope, not a whole lot indeed, but really, honestly, from both sides, great time breakouts. There's no crazy rushes, no cromrails, fast moving towards the enemy spawn. It's just pretty defensive. Probably benefits um, Espresso a bit more. It's a bit more of a defensive division. And he's already got on the southern side with zero like contention. He's just going to be able to capture that forest. He is, but at the same time, let's not forget that Espresso is the guy that needs to make plays early on. I mean, it's either early on, or you got to suffer for, you know, minute 11 to a minute 20. And I don't know that Russell Sprung always has the ability to hang, kind of hang in there. His deck certainly doesn't. Yeah, you don't really get a whole lot of C-Phase stuff, and your even anti-tank gun choices are limited. So if, I think if Insha here can just play the tank game, he has many, many... Many Cromwells, you just kind of get to a point where Espresso's going to run out of stuff. I mean, we're seeing even just this one half track actually maneuvering around and getting into a rather Gucci position because there's nothing there to stop him. Yeah, that's the one thing with the Russell Spoon infantry is that while they have quite a unique setup of them, they, they do tend to kind of fall apart there a little bit, I would say. Not... Yeah, it's all the anti tank game. Exactly. Exactly. And bringing all these Foster Jaegers and Gebertsi Jaegers are not going to do a whole lot much more. Um, heck, even bringing these plucky little P2s, they will come in, they'll be checking out the middle of that town, and then they're probably going to die just as quickly. It's probably, this is really Espresso's best place to make a push if he can just try and get up into the actual town area, clear it, and then just kind of hold the hill. Yeah, that's really what he needs to be doing on a map like this. He don't want to be really forced, especially in like his northern central position, trying to engage with armored vehicles. We're seeing Insha here maneuvering quite well and kind of taking a, the, I guess, the head in our orientation of this gingerbread man. Yeah, unfortunately, this guy, as fast as he might run, I don't think anything's going to go particularly well for him. Same thing over here, that Pack 36 in that north central position. He's getting circle strafed right now. Like, I've seen this. This is this is what you do in Company of Heroes 2. You don't do this here. Mm -hmm. But um, the Pack 36 might get a round off and still doesn't kill. Wow, that is very embarrassing. I also like how Insha literally only takes one airplane card and it's just recon spitfires. He has no interest in anything else. While Espresso does have a decent air force, I think those Junkers are going to be quite important with dealing with this Cromwell spam. Well, the fun thing about this is that bringing out the recon kind of encourages your opponent to actually bring in, as we see already, 120 Mike into the middle. Um, getting back to just a moment, we do see a bit of a push. Gebergs Jaegers, that long line that kind of got pushed in. That with the P2s, getting shoved on forwards, I don't know that this is going to have a, a massive breakthrough, but for right now, the biggest and most scariest thing there is a Stuart, which is not saying much. Yeah, and once again, a real lack of... Oh no, it was a good bad shakers do have AT grenades. They do. The Stuart yeah. is going to be pulling back. So this is really Espresso's best time to try to make this happen, because Insha, as we see by God Vision, is very much more focused up North Hill. Actually, I think he's going to be redirecting yeah, a Cromwell or two down south into the center, 
to try to dine near top as well as a Churchill Mark VI. You know, I see a crusade of Mark II, and, and there was a comment the last time I saw the check uh, a couple of weeks back. I made the remark about that. What the heck is a crusader good for? And there was a comment almost kind of vociferously telling me it's a supreme anti-air piece. Yes, it absolutely is very, very good in its lane. But at the same time, I think the reason we're looking at it so much is that, you know, this is not what you expect to have a lot of value yeah. in any other position than as a mobile anti-air net. And even then, if your anti-air is getting engaged as often as, the, as you know, something like a Crusader does, then you might want to reconsider replacing your units. But um... Yeah, I got a similar comment like that. From my one that was explained here, it was uh, the HP, because the uh... The Crusader has more HP compared to most other mm -hmm. anti-aircraft platforms. You know, the, the hidden HP stat, which is never really explained yet well. So, if it does get hit from an anti-tank gun, there's a much larger chance it will actually survive, rather than just getting blown up immediately. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, and this is probably the last thing I was saying in the matter, per se, is just like, if my, and we've seen the Daimler and the Cromwell engage the SPWs and the P2, we're probably going to see the Daimler die here. Probably. Um, but if we're, if we're, if my anti-air stuff is getting engaged, then again, which is happening, there's a major, major issue happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and no, Daimler survives because the Cromwell is a scary, scary platform and the P2 has better things to do than to sacrifice itself on the altar for the fatherland. So well done. And now we're really seeing the, the limitations here of Russell Spring because he is making a decent push, but just one Cromwell 5 and these tanks are absolutely cheap only, uh, like... 50 points or so, it's just knocking out all of this important light armored fire support, which is definitely going to disallow Espresso from you know, keeping up momentum of the central push. I mean, this one Stuart as well is holding his ground quite well with his three machine guns. Like, just forget how many machine guns goddamn Stuart tanks get. Yep, yep, that is true. Uh, and she's the Cromwell 7 over there sitting in defilade. So, and, and let's not forget, the Cromwell 6 in the meantime is as good as those M8 Scots, and I would argue even better still, because they don't die quite so damn quickly. Mm -hmm. Now they got pretty decent armor. And we're seeing, yeah, Espresso's continually, continuously trying to make his bus happen. He's got more infantry reinforcements, but he needs those anti-tank guns. That's what he is doing, to be fair. He's got some Pack 38s on the field, and they are starting to ward off the Cromwell, so that might buy him a bit of time to finish up his hill position, or at least the central part of the central hill position. Well, and I was thinking to myself, where's the artillery? And there's a 155 coming onto the field right about now. So this is a very, very big investment because this is the only artillery piece for the next two minutes um, for the checks. But the 155 is, I would argue, exactly what the, what the doctor's ordering here. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, especially against an infantry spam heavy division such as Russia's Spring. And especially how he's kind of been contained in his cauldron. He hasn't been able to really make much more progress to shoot the tanks. Mm -hmm. You can just pin them down in the center, and the 155 can make them disappear. Yeah, now the Cromwell 7 is probably going to disappear over here as he just gets constantly engaged. And Pack 38 does go well, down. Pack 36, maybe just kind of ping it to death. Maybe, maybe not. But if nothing else, we do see the Cromwell 6, the Cromwell 5. And a lot of recon is going to be coming on in. Yeah, this is going to get pinched off. They said about a cauldron before. I know the Germans certainly kind of espoused that doctrine. I didn't think they meant it to be on the receiving end of it, though. And I think that's about to happen. Yeah, one Cromwell does get sniped from that pack gun here. And yeah, it's really... Espresso just kind of bottlenecked himself in the center. I mean, just looking at the rest of the map down south, things are still quite quiet and up north. Honestly, maybe it'd probably be best for Espresso here to try to re-pivot and start hitting up north, try to go through the forest areas. But Incha has a decent defense. Well, and here's the issue, I think, about going through the forest, especially to the northern side. We're, you know, excuse the fact already that you have ready-made fortress, kind of like stone breaks to kind of break this up, that whole fortress complex, that farm complex right there, just to the east of the, of the Fusiliers. Um, but slapping a single unit of like the pioneers in there the czech pioneers that's enough again as another breakwater that you really have to spend a lot of time rooting them out which means debarking which means you've lost all the, all the momentum which means that you give your opponent plenty of time to kind of you know put any things in there like these converted gunners being brought over here yeah 
And also, if Inch, I can just get one or two tanks up north, just a couple Cromwells. Yeah, it pretty much shuts down any more northern play. I'm actually surprised he hasn't gotten anything up here yet. Absolutely. Uh, now, one of the last pack 38, I think, and the entirety of the army is going to clean up over here in the center. Courtesy of another Churchill. Um, and yeah, I think I think he heard you. He's going to continue to kind of push that northern side. Southern side, I think, like you said, if even if you're in Shaw, there's no reason to push down here right now. Just take your time. Yeah, there's not really too much incentive here. Especially against such a heavy infantry division, you really don't want to be fighting them in a the forest. Your tanks don't do well in that engagement. No, they do not. Um, similarly, though, uh, you don't do particularly well if you're a Gebirgsjäger running through a town. I don't care if you have yourself AT grenades. There's an awful lot of scary stuff over there that you don't want to be fighting. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see Cromwell. Okay. Cromwell moves east. Crusader moves west, and Crusader's actually moving himself into a position where he's going to get picked off before too much longer, because that Panther Strike squad, not enough to keep other things at bay. No, the Gebirg Takers, actually making a pretty good little salient here. If they can just get into that town a bit proper, and once again, he just needs a lot of bit more anti-tank. He does have some Panther Strike units in B-phase, and now in the hill, he probably should be using them, or just bring out the Yunkers. If the Yunkers actually has time to drop its bombs, which it does not. And here's the embarrassing part when the Recon Spitfire takes it out. With his 60 rounds of 20mm cannon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so you get a lot of value off that one plane. Yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of the, the kind of the disheartening thing. And I don't mean, you know, I take more suppression. It's just, it's... Ugh. Yeah, that, that hurts. Mm -hmm. That hurts. Now, northern side, we are seeing, yes, before people start shouting, yes, we have Brandenburg Pioneers, we have the Felschmier, get them moving on forward. They have taken a single force position. That's great. Oh, look, the 155. That's bad. Um, you know, we have roundabouts happening here. We just have whirls and roundabouts just kind of causing a bit of a hassle here. Some yeah, this though. is mm -hmm. really Espresso's best like area right now to attack. But once again, it comes down momentum. Like, you don't really have the mechanized or motorized units to, you know, rush through and push deep into the enemy lines. It's really is that one MG42 in the half track, which can stop a major push up north. But he's having to disembark in the forest, slowly move up. And the 155s are taking their toll. And we are seeing reinforcements up north for Churchill Mark 7 and some modest Strackley and other infantry being brought on in. The Churchill's going to take some time to get to the front, but. It's taken quite a bit of time for Espresso to get out of his position because it's just like that one half track is shutting him down. Yes, absolutely. That and the MG42. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, congratulations. You've now sunk in, you know, 150 points of troops up there and you have taken a force that has unfortunately very limited tactical value. Yeah. You really just need to get that anti tank up into the front ASAP. Once again, huge bottleneck of Rosso Springer. You know, a bit more used to fighting Tito's part of, you know, Tito, 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 whatever partisans in Yugoslavia and the actual rest and allies. That, that is true. Yeah, Tito, I'm sure, would say something quite uh, aggressively to him. Um, and not by drinking any vodka, which I found out is Texan, which is a very, very really? weird... Really? Yes, so Tito's vodka is what? made and bottled in Texas. Wow. Yeah, yeah, everything is bigger except for vodka, which still continues to suck. Um, for all my vodka drinkers out there, this is not a, th a, a, a new perspective of mine. You know, blame college, it's a whole thing. Brandon Burgers, in the meantime, getting back to more important matters, Brandon Burgers trying to move across the open field, and it goes about as well as you expect. Mm hmm. Especially it's converted. Even when the converted gunners get in there, that's when you know it's not going well. When the converted gunners are just like, ah, oh, yes, perfect time, guys. Time to shine. And, you know, start plinking away at your people. Mm -hmm. Heck, even that one, like, leader Cromwell on the hill is in a really nasty little spot. We've seen the LG 42s, you know, trying to slow ball some round his ray, which is going to force him back a little bit. But still, just once again, a few light armored vehicles. Is holding off all of his infantry. He needs to, he doesn't need more infantry. He needs, I'd say, more tanks, but that's, he doesn't really have a whole lot more other tanks to get. True. 
Now we are seeing a little bit of infantry being put into the southern side, so I'm guessing that's going to be a slow build down south. Um, and there's no off map here, just a couple more tubes for us to kind of worry about, so hmm. This is not going to be a fast push down south. I think we're going to no. see more, far more likely to see something kind of be a, a shoring up of the positions on the northern side. Yeah, because River, River Division, like Russell Spring, I don't remember if they do get off map or not. But off map for a division like that can be very important because if you're lacking in the tank fire support and you're a bit more slower, you know, infantry division, just being able to shell an area completely, that kind of gives you that good minute or two to actually move up your infantry into the recently barrage zone. And he really just needs to get across this bloody road and into the other forest because from the air you can really start to you know, spread your rings, maneuver about, not be so bottlenecked in this first forest here, which he's been stuck in for quite a few minutes now, and he's lost a lot of momentum. Like, as yeah, four, five tanks in the area now, six tanks, seven. Yep, that's, that's not good. You know, absolutely, but I think the kind of irony here is I was talking more about Insha as opposed to Espresso. Espresso, I think, feels a little more decaf at this point. I, I get me the feeling that, that really... If you were looking down south, is what I was kind of kind of trying to point out here, is that there's no off map over here from the Czechs as opposed to Rosselsprung. And, mm -hmm. and frankly, for me, you were saying about the fact that infantry needs this. I don't know. I, I feel like off map is always a good idea. On map, even better still. But off map gives you that concentration to kind of go and exploit something. And unfortunately, yeah. like you said, the Rosselsprung, the best they really have is that DO-17. That's not going to go anywhere today. That's going to get crushed. It, it will not be effective on the field. Yeah, a little bit of anti-air can really just shut down airplane heavy decks, which is why sometimes, especially if Insta's deck is a perfect example, you just see people don't bring up airplanes because it can always be inconsistent whether they work or not. And, the, and there are big point investments for usually, especially against good players, you can get a good anti-aircraft net up. You may only get one or two bombing runs out of him. If an off-map, if you're not an idiot, you should get all the barrages out of it. That's true. That's true. And yeesh, the 155 starts to continue to obliterate the middle of the field. And in, I'm not going to say destroy the anti air positions just yet, but it ain't going to be long before they go down. And mm -hmm. when you have an 183 millimeter over here in the meantime as well, it's going to be it's gonna be bad all around. Yeah. Really bad. It definitely feels the problem with Espresso. He's got a lot of quality infantry, and he's throwing them all over the place now in the center, center, middle, or north. But he's just not been able to really make any breakthroughs. He's been just shut down at every point. And once again, it's it's the armor. The, the Cromwells and Churchills are just a nasty wall of lead. Though I will say, having the M15 uh, Italian tanks over here, especially south of that major arterial in the town, still can do some work. Um, don't don't expect them to, to move mountains, um, but still doing a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a terrible tank for 20 points here. The Cromwell 7 has got line of sight and is going to be fighting back. He certainly will be. Now, we have recon in the, in the south, we have recon in the middle. Yeah, um, expect to see a resurgent push in the south. You see right now, we have Daimler, we have a Cromwell five, uh, 4, oops, that was at the eyes on the wrong side there, a Cromwell 8, what? and we have a bunch of infantry. <laughs> yeah, this is... This How many is... Cromwells did they make, Khan? <laughs> Enough that the Romans said, dude, rein it in. Um, and we're even seeing it in that town. Yeah, so there's a ton of action happening over here in that town. North central position, 155, not engaging, unfortunately, which means that this push by the Poles is really only going to stay over here as we're <laughs> seeing a rush the other direction as well. Uh, that, 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 again, that's not what you want to do there, Jim. That's just an easy way to get yourself killed. Yeah, it's not going to be going well. Yeah, especially like it's north and central push. It's just, it's a whole heap of firepower being like brought up here. But he can't really... The problem with his position for him attacking it, I understand why he is attacking it, because he just needs at least one bloody flag to get some, you know, points to take on his opponent. But he can't really move anywhere else after you get the position. It's honestly not too hard to hold if he can actually fully hold it, because you just kind of stay on the 
less obvious side of the heel and just wait for the tanks to come up and over and then shoot him with a Panzer Shrek. It's just he needs to get his forces in here, but he has like almost a company's worth of dudes just all bunched up, and I'm really surprised the French artillery hasn't just blown him to smithereens yet. You know, I was wondering that about that myself. I was looking at that thinking to myself, isn't there something a little bit scarier to be engaging here? Now, bring the Stuart go. back in for the command bonus. Great idea. Uh, Stuart coming in. Also great idea. Unfortunately, that Stuart will die before too much longer. Mm hmm Shrek's up. Stuart's down. There you go. There we go. This might be the small little breakout Espresso may actually get now. He's in a pretty good position. It's really going to come down to his Panzer Shrek to well, Shrek some Panzers. Here's, here's the problem. Look down south. That This rolling attack is actually beginning as we speak. And oh. while they don't have any artillery to really kind of help boost them here, they do have excellent, excellent recon. Yeah. And That's great maneuver. It, and, and it truly is. I mean, unsarcastically, un it is a really, really good idea. Yeah, he's got the recon shirt to see any reinforcements coming in. The Spitfires are also doing really good recon, allowing him to spot infantry inside the forest so the armored vehicles can soften them up. He just needs the infantry, which are coming in now. Once again, we love it when people just kind of bring in infantry, but don't actually unload them and wait for the perfect time to push them up. So this is... Textbook 101 on how to like push a town or forest position, the, especially as an armored division. And the recon, wow, excuse me, the Polish recon over here as well, 12 man squad, heavy. These guys roll real heavy. And, and frankly, congratulations, like you, you have not seen the tanks roll in just yet. That's because the infantry hasn't even begun to fight. Mm hmm. Um, is this Stuart getting aggressed on by this Falschmaker? Hmm. That, that, was a, that was a choice. Yeah, uh, he decided to walk east, ran smack dab into said Stuart, and decided oh. that, you know, his uh, his mother was calling, and he, he went the other direction here. Good man. Very, very good man. You should always listen to your mother on that one. Yes. Um, now, we're also seeing an AB-43. Okay, so now the Stuart and the AB-43 are going to engage. Um, and I, I, I might be wrong, actually. I was going to give that to the Stuart here. But he decides to back up. That That is a very interesting decision. Yeah, not wanting to risk it too much. Yeah. And also, AB-43 has pretty limited like usage in this fight right now. He can't really throw it into the forest. And it's still, like, like actual... Well, like, only, like, one proper like anti-tank roll here to help fight it, which would be a bit more of a cleaner engagement for Incher to deal with. A cleaner one, sure, but I feel like any single time you're going to be aggressive, especially if, well, it's just, it, it, you, it's never going to be clean. It will mm -hmm. never, ever, ever be clean. Um, and we're seeing that that vaunted kind of early position, the thing that had held for the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of this match, really without any kind of aggression, kind of crumbles under not, not an inconsiderable amount of pressure, let's be fair, but crumbles under the first assault. My yeah. curiosity will be, will they get vehicles in time to shut down these Brandenburg pioneers and Brandenburg is being moved on in? And that, that's I don't a, know. That's a very good point, because those guys CQC can prove to be quite a pain, but honestly, it, this forest isn't terrible for tank fights, because there's quite a lot of that open light forest area, rails, chrome rails, especially if a 95mm high explosive cannon can really do a number on a Brandenburg before they can get like a Panzer Shrek off. Well, I mean, it, was, Faust. it wasn't was the Panzer Shrek or the Panzer Faust to kind of worry about. It was more the idea of if you're the Poles, this is again that that not fire and maneuver, but that maneuver for sure that you want to be using here. Cromwell does go down. Actually, it was a recon Cromwell. Yeah, one of the, the six recon Cromwells that he gets. Um, but you don't want to give your opponent any kind of time to actually react to this. So you you got to be throwing the kitchen sink and then some at everything. Now, we are seeing, yeah. like you just said right now, that, that Cromwell 8, which is just <laughs> laying down the law. He doesn't care. They don't care at all. <laughs> Jeez. And, and the entire southern part of the map is now Polish. Well, check. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to kind of check my, my facts there next time. My apologies. Uh, Brandenburgers surrender. Another Brandenburgers. These guys are retreating in droves yeah. now, which makes perfect sense. And a plucky dude coming in on a Panzer Shrek. 
uh, on a BMW uh, motorcycle thinks, ah, oh, yes, we've got this, boys. Don't you worry. Yeah, this Tank is... Needs road to tanks. This is this is real rough. Yeah. Like, especially now, Inter's got very good, like, momentum here. of actually chasing him down, cavalry style. What is this, like, the end of a battle, a total war game? Good God. Exactly, exactly. At this point, I click the button that says kill prisoners, and I start hearing the, that kind of messy, oh, messy... That's, that's my favorite button! Oh, it was, oh man, I, you know, this this is crass, and this is awful, and this is a war crime in any other time that would not be the medieval period, but the whole kill prisoners button for me, I don't know. When I was that age, playing that game, I, I hit that an awful lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Some, something something primal in me, something very ashen core about me, about it. Um, one Brandenburg pioneer sitting in the forest, uh, creepily kind of huddling against the tree. Um, no one's gonna pick him out just yet, which is fine, because you know they've they've taken the territory they need to. They're getting the bleed that's gonna happen, and unless something crazy happens like here in the center, which I don't think it could or should. Oof. Um, Cromwell does go down though. Thank you, Pack Forty. Mm -hmm. Um. This this might be. This might be a little hard to break through. Yeah, Southern Post was just extremely effective, not just so much in its tactical application, but the strategic one that relieves pressure from Incha losing a little bit of up north. He lost that far farm position as well as the gingerbread neck position as well, but it's still a 12 trove, and it feels like he's definitely traded more effectively, and once again, it's just tank attrition. We're really starting to see, especially that Cromwell 8 push down south, just how buggered Espressa is when it comes to his anti-tank play. I mean, if Cromwell's H are charging across an open field without recon support and aren't getting punished for it, that's not a good sign. No, it is not. And now we're seeing the half-track, the Daimler, the M5 uh, leader moving south-north, kind of trailing down that ginger head. And yeah, this is going to be one position after another here. We're seeing a pack 40. He's going to try to rotate down to actually get eyes on. But I feel like, yep, you might kill one M5, Stuart. You might kill even two. But I think the third Daimler's going to kill you eventually. Yeah. Really starting to see that snowball effect now. And the thing is, Espresso still has a crap ton of infantry. And they're still very good infantry. But infantry, as much as I can love using them, can only do so much. Especially now, if, like, there's a decent amount of heavy artillery on the field from Insha, and actually doing very good counter battery against Espresso's RT. Well, he's been taking. There's been a little bit of a duel back and forth you know, on that. We did see the 155 engaged pretty hard, and the 183 has taken some kind of HP damage. Um, now, as as the the duel continues, I do have to kind of laugh about maybe the the pluckiest, and at the same time most devastating infantry that we see on the field, the converted RAF, with the, Vic with the Vickers K-Gun, which I'm, isn't, the, yeah, isn't the Vickers K-Gun just a modified version of, of World War One, basically, isn't it? Um, kind of. It's similar, but it's also the one they use in all, like, the uh, aircraft. It does, also the SAS used it a bunch in the desert. Yeah, but, okay, all right, fair enough. I, I withdraw some of my, my kind of good humor about that. Um, I continue to now, oof, say a feeders into that that fusilier as it was engaged by three Cromwells, two half tracks, a Stuart, or Cromwell five, the scouts, the converted RAF and a partridge in a pear tree. Like this you said about if I if I can move armor forward and not get punished for it, if I can move anything forward like this, there's zero scouting. Zero yeah. scouting. They are literally scouting with their faces right now. Yeah, it's just recon by force and he's gonna get into a pretty vulnerable line here. Knocking out the Trenny Mill. The AB41 is in position, but he can only really do so much, which is not a whole lot against actual armored units. And this is just going to cause a crap ton of pressure. J87 coming in. Might actually get yeah, one of the Cromwells you've seen actually split up a bit. Well, he got the heat. No, wow. He oh! He was forced to pull away. Fascinating. Yeah. And, and the scout claims another kill. Jeez. Yeah. That's just another, like, real huge advantage of the Cromwell, is it's just baseline speed. Is that against J87 or cluster bombs in general, 
you have a pretty good chance if you micro it correctly to just dodge the bombs because you just can move out of the way so bloody quickly. This is true. This is very true. Now we did see there's a pack 40, a hidden pack 40 taking out one of those Cromwells, but one Cromwell has died. That's fine. Bring on the next six. So the steward has now died. You're a monster. And the Italian has died. So, you know, for every death, there is new life. For every new life, there's another thing of death. I feel like I'm watching a perverted kind of like 40k moment here as tiny victory just get, turns into tiny defeat over here for espresso across the map. Mm-hmm. They're at that plus two bleed now, and that is not a good sign. Just <laughs> the converted RAF coming in to just clean up the job. Yeah. Yeah, we can even see that that town, for example, the artillery commander, a man who I feel like should be a little bit further behind the front lines than where he is right now, um, leading the way. And group after group is getting pinched off here. We see a mad final push of Italian tanks, an entire platoon plus being pushed forwards. I feel like this is that, that you know, I have... One last chips on the table. I'm going to go and bet everything. The house is on this in this roll. Let's see what happens. If it's yeah, what's going and I'm going to trust the Italians to get me that final victory. Yeah, Italians gamble, don't they? I mean, maybe. I'm. Uh, they're like uh, at Monte Cassino, right? Yeah, you're right. Monte Cassino. That's exactly what it was. The Monte Cassino uh, problem, isn't it? Yeah, you're yes. right. Yes. Um. Not to be confused with three card Monty with it. I understand it. it's a an Australian game. Um, I don't know that that joke did not land as well as I thought it was going to. So I, it's a good thing that that espresso surrenders and saves me from any more lousy lousy attempts at humor. Oh yeah, the KD. Yeah, yeah. to be yeah. expected, and and certainly worthwhile too. Mm hmm. But yeah, when your scout car over here takes out four on the opposite in the opposite side. Um, Cromo Pros goes and takes out three himself. The MG42 is very, very good value across this match. Yeah. Yeah, Cromwell's just doing all good. Even the uh, 7.2 inch got yes. quite a lot of kills. Well, that was the, the uh, counter battery you were talking about, so it's yep. really well there. And then losses. That Nothing one really tried home. Well, that uh, most maybe like the whole pack forty, and that's about it. But other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I um, that's just a division mismatch. Yeah, I mean, Russell Spring is very. It's a tough division to play. It's it's kind of similar to the Finns and the Raves, just a limited anti tank, and especially against the Czechs, which are probably one of the best armor divisions right now, just because Cromwells are so bloody good. It can be extremely difficult to just deal with them unless you're like, you know, using your pack 40s to get like five to one kills of every single one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but any final thoughts there, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then it's going to do it for us today. Uh, until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.